हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम A murderer and a thief caught a holy man as he was walking past in the forest and thought why are you so happy you must have an immense amount of wealth for you to be this happy give me your wealth immediately the holy man who happened to be narad muni said i have no wealth that you would appreciate meaning gold and money The decoit at that point in time his name was Ratnakar said you must have and continued to be extremely aggressive Narad Muni said why are you doing this do you realize how much sins you are accumulating every time you kill someone every time you steal from someone every time you insult someone every time you hurt someone and he thought sins no i wouldn't be collecting sins i'm not doing this for myself i'm doing it for my family i'm doing it for my parents who are aged and don't have anything and i have to look after them i'm doing it for my children who want to build their future and for my wife who who needs all or rather than needs has all these desires and narji asked him do you think they'll take any of your sins and ratnakar thought of course they would. why wouldn't they i'm doing it for them when naraji persevered saying well why don't you ask them you might be surprised considering it to be a trick ratnakar decided to tie him up to a tree so he wouldn't disappear goes back home and asks his wife you know we vow to live this life together and go through difficulties and joys together and support each other and love each other and honor each other would you share my sins responded almost immediately no why would i it's your choice how you bring in the income from this family i do my share of the bargain that in itself caught him so unaware and took him aback he then went to his children and asked them would you share in all my sins and of course the children would it children have the feeling that it's their right to be able to get whatever they can and and the parents should just provide and keep providing so he thought well children are immature they haven't experienced life yet and you know they wouldn't know any better but my parents my parents have really seen life they would they would understand how difficult it is and so he goes to them but they too refuse to take his sins meeting this holy man changed this murderer's life for he realized that every single consequence he would have to face alone and the more he thought about it the more he was horrified how many things he's done wrong and what all terror and pain and suffering would be waiting for him as a consequence so incredibly heavy and disillusioned he comes back to narad muni unties him and says what will i do now how can i ever make it better and narad muni guides him and teaches him japa japa is the most powerful of spiritual techniques and this murderer who would have accumulated enough sense to make him suffer for thousands of lifetimes in one lifetime purified and cleansed himself to become a saint whom we call as valmiki the author of the ramayana and valmiki's story is a testament and a tribute to the glory of the practice of japa in the hanuman chalisa when it says prabhu mudrika meli mukamai jalati langage acharachanai 
Hanumanji jumps over the ocean of samsara, carrying Lord Rama's ring in his mouth. But what it's really saying is that the ring has the name Ram, and so in his mouth he is constantly chanting the name Ram. And this chanting, this constant chanting, is Japa. And this constant chanting of the Lord's name helps us to cross over the ocean. The ocean is used very often as a symbolism for suffering, because right now when we look around us, all we see is endless suffering. And I know that sounds very pessimistic or, or grim, but if we really do think that the problems never end, and even our joys are mixed up with fears, and our dreams are mixed up with doubt. And people can be so difficult. And so, when we look at it from a point of view as the number of actions that we do and the number of consequences that could come to us, especially since every thought is an action, then all these consequences which we have accumulated just start looking so vast and so huge, just like Valmiki would have felt. And so, the feeling of that it's so much. Is what the ocean represents. Even when we are in pain or experiencing heartache, we just feel that it's so vast, it's so big. How am I ever going to get over it? And so, suffering very often gets described as the ocean of samsara. And so, Hanumanji jumps over it. He's able to cross it. And this is symbolically our journey to cross our ocean of suffering, so that we no longer experience it. We can be free of it and experience just joy. And the way to do this is japa by constantly chanting a mantra. We are able to remove all suffering. Is the point of this beautiful verse. And the topic is so vast and precious, but to summarize it, japa is repetition of a mantra. A mantra is usually formulated by the rishis, taking into account the way the sounds are put together, and so they have scientifically formulated it to create specific vibrations. And then, as we chant it, the vibration that It creates within our own mind and within our own being changes the way we think and feel. Japa has many ways in which it is effective. To repeat a mantra again and again requires us to develop the skill of concentration. Just this one skill is so phenomenally important. And essential to our success in any field. But not only do we get very concentrated when we chant the mantra, because of the association of the thought with the divine, and because of the vibration created by that particular mantra, the mind also becomes purified. It says, though, Pujagur Dev Swami Chinmayananda says. The most powerful detergent to be able to clean all the horridness that we have accumulated over the years. Every time we repeat the name, it removes or dissolves previous built-up negativities. So it helps us to concentrate, and it also helps us to purify our mind. And when the mind is associated with the divine, and when the mind is completely focused and single-pointed, it will naturally become quiet, and all thoughts will dissolve into silence. And in this silence, we see and find all that we are, and the divinity. That has always been there, and it shines through to become who we are and what we experience. 
Japa may seem so incredibly simple, but it's often the simple things that make the most profound differences in our life. Start now and see it for yourself. Think about it.